Gustafsson Lake standoff was a month-long siege in the southern interior of uh, British Columbia in the summer of 1995. Um, I think it was one of the most significant acts of armed resistance outside of Oka 1990. To start with uh, Gustafsson Lake, it's in the Caribou region of the south central interior of British Columbia. It's known as Chipatin by the Shikwepmik. It's in Chiquipmic territory. In 1989, some Chiquipmic established a Sundance camp at uh, Gustafson Lake, Chipatin, and they were holding an annual Sundance over the years. The land was claimed by an American rancher named Lyle James, and over the years, their uh, relationship kind of deteriorated. And in 1995, he wanted the Sundance camp evicted, moved off of that that land so that his cattle could graze there. In uh, June of 1995, there began to be some incidents with Lyle James and some of his cowboys coming into the Sundance camp to threaten and intimidate um, an elder and his family who were living uh, at the camp. The New Democratic Party were the party in power in British Columbia at the time and they had just suffered a number of uh, corruption scandals. It was basically like uh, an opportunity for them to show a strong law and order stance and to uh, you know, kind of crush this renegade native uh, camp that had you know, sprung up. So they authorized a massive operation by the RCMP. It was the largest uh, paramilitary operation carried out by the RCMP. And they eventually deployed about 450 heavily armed uh, officers, mostly from emergency response teams. And they also got uh, assistance from the Canadian Armed Forces uh, primarily in the form of eight or nine bison armored personnel carriers with the driver and the commander. So one of the worst attacks uh, carried out by the RCMP occurred on September 11th. Previous to this, they had negotiated with the defenders in the camp a no shooting zone which included a dirt road that allowed the defenders access to uh, get drinking water, to bathe and whatnot. So on the morning of September 11th, the RCMP snuck into this area of the road that they had determined was a good point for an ambush. And they laid uh, explosive charges into the dirt road. They hid uh, one of the bison armored personnel carriers in the f a little ways down the road in the forest. And as the red pickup left the camp and was driving down this dirt road, and it went over the uh, explosives that they laid and they detonated the explosives. There was a massive explosion. It blew the car battery out of the engine compartment and it was found about 150 feet away. There was a massive plume of smoke. Amazingly, the two people in the truck were uh, uninjured and they jumped out of the truck after the explosion and began running. I and mean, there was a dog with them in the truck as well who also started running. After the explosion and the people had left the vehicle, uh, the Bison APC came out, smashed into the vehicle. Uh, the police came out and started shooting at the people fleeing the truck. The police shot the dog as it was fleeing as well. And that began an hours long firefight between some of the defenders and the police who are now in these uh, bison armored personnel carriers. Wolverine was, uh, was an elder in the camp. He uh, engaged in a shootout with this APC and it eventually became disabled. So they had to bring in a number of other APCs to rescue all the police who are in these armored vehicles and to extract them and to take out the disabled uh, armored personnel carrier. So that was the biggest shooting incident. There was about 77,000 rounds were fired by the RCMP and one woman was uh, injured. She was shot in the arm. The siege uh, eventually ended on September 17th. That's when the, the remaining defenders in the camp burned their weapons and proceeded to walk out. They were obviously arrested by the RCMP. There was a year-long trial that lasted from 1996 to 1997. It was during this trial that a lot of the uh, RCMP uh, strategy was really revealed. The RCMP had made uh, a videotape of all their meetings and a lot of the activity they carried out for training purposes because they had envisioned that this would be a very useful uh, learning experience in how to deal with uh, native standoffs of this nature. And one of the things that came out in the videotape that the RCMP produced themselves was statements from uh, their main uh, media liaison officer, Sergeant Montague, who stated... Did you find somebody today that can help us with a disinformation or a smear campaign? Smear campaigns are... Our they uh, released the criminal records of uh, individuals they claimed were in the camp as well as juveniles, which is illegal. But a lot of these individuals weren't in the camp. Um, it was just a method by the RCMP to criminalize and to further isolate the individuals in the camp. They cut off all media uh, contact with the defenders so that only the RCMP version of events was reported. Uh, the corporate media faithfully uh, reported the RCMP version of events as if it was truth. But as it was revealed, the methods and the, uh, the disinformation campaign carried out by the police, a lot more indigenous people began to support 
the Chapatin defenders. But today, Wolverine is basically considered a hero uh, for his actions. You know, being an elder, engaging in armed resistance against this, uh, you know, paramilitary assault by heavily armed uh, police. <laughs> Original Dandaya, Tidago, to put the Olayan Pandemic, Yalvin and the Peace Guard, the Wolla, the Minfaba, the Mandamakas, Problem.